Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the NVH toolkit to measure noise, vibration, and harshness. On this 2004 Ford Expedition that I have, it has a major vibration that happens at highway speeds. So we're going to use this tool to figure out what is causing that vibration. Okay, so in the toolkit, you see that it comes with a three-channel interface, three BNC cables to hook to our picoscope. We have a three-axis accelerometer to measure vibration, and it also comes with a microphone to measure sounds if you wanted to do that. In this video, we're gonna focus on the vibration. Okay, the Pico scope that you are using has to be enabled to use this NVH toolkit, so make sure you have that done. Um, you also need a pass-through device, and we're gonna be using a Cardac M to communicate with our vehicle. That is made by Drew Technologies. And then you also need to have this downloaded on your laptop, this J2534 toolbox, and that is what is going to communicate with that pass-through device. Okay, and then when you're ready, we're gonna open up this PicoScope Diagnostics tab, and you'll notice that there's an NVH selection on the side, and that is where we're gonna do our test. Okay, so after I get it all hooked up, we'll come back here and see how to set it up. Okay, so you can see that I've plugged the interface box into my picoscope. I've got the accelerometer plugged in. The other side of that looks like this. It's got a really strong magnet on the base. It measures X, Y, and Z axis vibrations. We're gonna put this on the driver's seat rail with this part facing the front of the vehicle. We'll do that right now. So just right down here. Okay. We've got our pass-through device plugged in to our OBD2 port. Our key is in the on position. All right. And then remember I told you, you gotta open up that toolbox first. And we need to make sure that it can communicate with our Cardac M before our PicoScope will. So notice I can pick that here. You have to type in the serial number from the back of your device. Okay, and we're logged in. And you notice that it has found that Cardac M and we are communicating now. All right, now we can go back and open up our Pico Diagnostics software. Click on this NVH tab on the left. Start a new test. Pick which device you're using as your pass-through. It will try to communicate with it. And then we're going to put in some vehicle information. So this is a V8, four-wheel drive. It saved our previous settings from the last time I did this, so that is the correct differential ratio. That's my correct tire size. We're going to use this three-channel with the accelerometer. Shows you how to hook it up, where to put it, and now we're ready to go. So this is the screen where we're going to record and analyze our vibrations. Okay, if you want to put in more advanced information, you can go into this vehicle information tab, click on this advanced, and you can input gear ratios, pulley sizes, different things like that. Okay, but I think we have everything we need for this vibration, so we're going to go ahead and move our tools around so we can safely drive, and we'll go record our vibration, and we'll come back and see what we got. Okay, so we've completed our test drive, and this is the capture that we've taken. You'll notice that it only records 50 seconds at a time. So that's all we can see in here, which is plenty. You can definitely see that we had some major vibrations going on. Um, just as a rule of thumb, from the driver's seat, you should never really have more than 10 millijs. So these vibrations are well over that. Um, let's up figure out first what the software was doing to figure out where these vibrations were coming from. 
So we know that we plugged in that pass-through device, and that pass-through device is getting RPM and speed from, from the computer. And then we input differential ratio, engine size, different things. And like I showed you before, if you went into the advanced, you put in pulley sizes and things like that. So using math, it's just taking the frequency of the vibrations and calculating where those vibrations would be coming from. So it breaks it down into some different categories that we can see up here. We see these T's, E's, P's. So T vibrations are tire related. And you can see there's three of them. There's a T1, T2, T3 right there. These are orders. So this is a first order vibration, second order vibration, third order vibration. First order vibrations are happening at the same frequency as the components. So these are happening once per tire revolution, twice per tire revolution, three times. And then you got these E's, which are engine vibrations. Same thing. E1's would be happening at the same speed as the crankshaft. Two times the speed, four times the speed. I don't see any E3's on here. And then these P's are prop shaft vibrations or drive shaft vibrations. So that's where most of our problem is lying, as you can see. So we have a vibration that's happening every rotation of the drive shaft. And you also have this other vibration happening as twice the speed. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and play back this 50 seconds so you can see how the vibrations are changing and which ones are worst. Right here, just on this little capture we have, you can see that they're all three pretty bad, but this P1 is higher than all of them. Let's go ahead and click play. So you can see that the vibration was only really happening at above 75 miles an hour, which is why we're only looking at about 80 to 85 miles an hour in this 50 second capture. That P1 vibration is just off the charts, obviously. Okay, so we know we're going to be going after some U-joints or an out-of-balance shaft or something like that. And we could also look at this in different ways. We could look at this over time on this 3D graph. You could look at it as a bar graph, which is useful sometimes. I like how it breaks down right here, those orders of vibration. Okay, and again, if I click play, you can watch them changing live. So this is just a basic video on how to use MVH. Obviously, you could probably do a little bit more, but this should give you everything you need to pinpoint where vibrations are coming from if you have them.